back to my channel everybody. Well, I'm gonna do a book haul today. I have never done a book haul. I picked up a couple books the other day. Um, I'm kind of out of books to even have like a running TBR. I think I only have two new books that I haven't read. And I, I just know that there's not somebody like using a saw out there. I just know that there's not. I'm gonna, close, I'm gonna close my window and hopefully that helps. Either way I'm doing this right now so sorry if that's distracting. Anyway, like I was saying, I just don't have a whole lot of books to, you know, have a real running TBR, so I went and got some. Um, I'm going to quickly run through. I got some books for Joe, and I don't know if anybody cares about that or not, but um, he is going into first grade. Um, he's a really strong reader, um, so I just want to keep sort of like challenge, challenging him, and a lot of the books that he has are like, he's ready to read books. He's can read them pretty much all the way through. These are still pretty like fairly beginner books but I think that they have just a little bit more challenging words. So I got this Dora book. Follow those feet. These are all from half price books too so they're really cheap. They're like two dollars. Um, this Bubble Guppies one which I don't even think he ever liked Bubble Guppies. All these shows are like kind of babyish for him now. And then The Great Toy Escape which he loves Toy Story so and then I got a couple of um, VeggieTales books. We never watched VeggieTales growing up, but it seems like a cute little concept and they have, um, you know, a lesson to every story and kind of talks about um, God within it and stuff like that. So I felt like that would be good for bedtime. Here's a couple more that I got that are in his room, but it's not important. They're just VeggieTales books. And then for me from Half Price Books, um, I think her name is Nicole Gallagher. She's like the redhead, super cool chick, um, whose channel has grown like ex exponentially um, during the quarantine. But she's a big fan of Stephen King. I don't like to be scared. I don't like to be stressed out like that. Um, but she just makes it sound so intriguing. And she said that Misery is her favorite. And I've watched this movie and it's kind of like... It's not scary. It's more like true crime um, sort of thing because the guy is like abducted. Paul Sheldon is abducted by his, one of his biggest fans and she I think doesn't like how he ended the story so she's making him write another book to make it um, what she deems like an appropriate ending and then things kind of just like go haywire. Um, I believe at one point he like she breaks his ankles or his knees or something. So I'm gonna try to read this one. Also it's not very long. It's only like 300 pages and I already know the story so I feel like it'll be easy to read and then I'll kind of go from there with the whole Stephen King thing or maybe I won't maybe I'll stop I don't know there's that and then um, I believe I think it was Peru's project which is pretty much the first booktuber that I ever watched consistently uh, I think that she um, read this on audiobook. It's The Devil in the White City, and it's about the 1893 um, World's Fair and like this series of murders that went on during it. Very intrigued by this just because it it almost sounds like it should read by fic like a fiction book, but it's nonfiction and it, all of this stuff really happened. So um, I'm excited. I really like things like this. I like that this is like a true crime sort of thing. I've been kind of interested in reading true crime lately. Um, obsessed with true crime podcasts and things like that so I figured this saw. Anyway, I figured that this reading true crime would be the next step so decided to read that and it's a pretty hefty book. It's only 388 pages. The font's kind of small though but there are pictures but it feels really heavy. Devil in White City. This is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I've been seeing a lot about these stories um, on Instagram and I'm really excited to have like another romance sort of thing thrown in there. Whatever happened to Meg Cabot? Is she still writing books? Where is she? I remember being obsessed with her books. Princess Diaries was my favorite series as a teenager and then I read some of her adult books but I don't think she writes books anymore does she? Anyway I say that because she like wrote a little blurb about this book up there. <laughs> anyway so this is about Danica Brown who's like trying to 
get into like a um, friends with benefits type of situation. She's sick of dating. So there's a fire drill that kind of went wrong and Zaf, the rugby player, I guess saves her in some form or fashion and um, they blow up on social media and so he decides that he wants to continue to play through, play out that attention to get, to bring attention to his charity. So obviously then they fall in love. Like. <laughs> That's the best thing about these type of books is that is the end. They like they fall in love eventually and you just know that going in. So I read The Proposal by Jasmine Guillory and it just wasn't black enough for me. So I'm hoping that like this is a little blacker if you know what I mean. I was telling my um, sister that I wanted it to be like a little more Terry McMillan sort of thing. This one is called This Is My America which I think came out this month or like in July. And um, so it's basically about this girl, she, um, her dad is on death row and she's been sort of writing into a, some sort of innocence project trying to get him out. And then um, he, his time's running out and he's um, uh, almost up to be sentenced to death. And then something happens where his, her brother is also sort of being targeted um, as a, as a potential suspect in another crime and so she's also trying to figure that out and sort of it, I guess chronicles the unraveling of those two stories so I'm excited about this also a little true crimey I love I love a um what is it like an overturned conviction sort of thing or like um wrongful imprisonment I don't love it Maybe I shouldn't say it like that. It's horrible and it shouldn't happen, but that's why I like when it's like taken care of at the end. <laughs> anyway, so I'm excited to read this. Also, this cover is beautiful. I love this illustration so much. It's so pretty. It's just so pretty. It's great. Anyway, next is The Black Flamingo, which I feel like. How long has this been out? I feel like I'm like the last one to read or have this. Um, also a beautiful cover, but um, this one's pretty straightforward. I feel like it just um, kind of recounts the story of this guy, Michael, who lives in London and he's of mixed race. And then he comes out and eventually he finds his place in drag. And so it kind of just chronicles his um, exploring his layers and identity and things like that. So um, I didn't know that it was kind of written in like, I don't even know how you would, is it poetry? Is it? I don't know how you, whatever, whatever like that is, that's how it's written. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm excited to read it and obviously because it's written like that, it'll be super quick. So I'm excited about that. Another like beautiful cover. How do they do this? She's so pretty. So this is about a character, Amani uh, Santiago, who um, got pregnant as a teen, I believe in her freshman year of high school. And um, she's a dream of kind of becoming a chef. And she, I think, sort of just tells herself, like, it's not the time, you know, whatever, after high school, it's like, you know, she's got responsibilities and stuff, but I think something goes on in the book where she's kind of forced to explore her talents, which I feel like this is going to really resonate with me. I wasn't, I was technically an adult when I had my son, but I'm still very young. Yeah, I don't know, I feel like this is going to resonate with me a lot, so I'm excited about that, and it's just so pretty. There are some people who will paint the edges of their book. And I'm kind of thinking about doing it with this one because even the inside, look at it, it's so pretty. Wow, it's so pretty. Should I do it? I think I can do it. I'm, I'm gonna try. The thing is, is that I have to start with the yellow to orange gradient sort of thing. And so if I get to that point, I'm like, this isn't gonna work, I'll just stop. Anyway, so I'm excited to read that. Um, and I think that's it. That's the, that's the long and short of it. Oh no, I missed one. Duh. I forgot it because I've been reading it. I really don't know what the plot of this story is necessarily. I know that um, essentially, from what I've read so far, the 
basically like New York City is born. And then from there you start following the stories of different boroughs within um, New York City. And so you've got Manhattan and Brooklyn and the Bronx and I think even more than that, like three other ones. And um, I also think that they're like trying to defeat something. I think that like Staten Island is one of the characters and Staten Island is maybe a little racist. Um, they're trying to defeat a monster. Did I say that? I don't know. It's fantasy. I don't usually do fantasy. It's, it's been a it's been a hard 25 pages that I've read in the sense that it's my brain just doesn't work like that to like it doesn't work in a way where I take that in very easily but I'm trying because this sounds like very captivating so yeah that's all I know about this but it's by N.K. Jemisin which I know she's like an incredible writer and um this will be my first book that I read of hers so I'm excited about it anyway that is actually it now let me know if you've read any of these books, especially um, The City We Became, because I'm really interested to see what people have thought about that. Also, if you have any suggestions of where I should go after Misery, if I do enjoy it, like what should be the next step if you've read Stephen King novels. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.